At work, we can receive information in many different formats, and we need to pass this information and process it and possibly display it. So in this example, we will have a JSON file and a YML file that we will uh, try to process and uh, update and display. So let's try opening these two in uh, VS Code. So uh, here is a JSON file and here is a YML file with the same kind of data, a list of uh, recent SIPRails uh, episodes. Now, personally, myself, I prefer YML to JSON because it is uh, a bit uh, cleaner and more readable. But it doesn't really matter for this episode. We are going to try using both. So let's try uh, parsing a JSON file or a YML file with uh, plain Ruby, first of all, without using Rails. So let's go to the console and uh, I will say, uh, no, actually we will not say Rails console, I will just say IRB to ensure that we are not using anything from uh, Rails, only pure Ruby. So let's try parsing a YML file. So first of all, we will need a path to the file that we are going to parse and we're going to have to open this file. So I will copy the path to this file and here we have the path. And now I will say uh, uh, file equals file dot open path. So here we have uh, a file object, and now we will try to pass it with YAML. So I will say YAML dot uh, YAML load, and I will say uh, file. But we have an initial constant YAML, so I will need to say require YAML. Now I will say yaml load file once again, and here you see we have a uh, past file. So let's uh, say past data, or just say data equals what we had above. So we have data, let's say data dot first, we have the first object, let's get just the title. Here it is, okay, so we've got this title. Now let's try changing this file and writing our changes. So I will say data first title, for example, will be uh, changed title again, okay? And I will click uh, enter, let's get data first title. You see it has been kind of saved, but it has been only saved in our memory. You see the file hasn't been updated yet. So to save the file, I will just say file.write and I will pass in the path that we already have from before, and I will pass in uh, this data, dot to YAML. And surely I need to close the gap. And you see, the file has been updated, so change title again. So this way we can uh, kind of just use Ruby without Rails to extract some data from a structured YAML file and uh, uh, change it and save it. Now let's try doing the same with JSON. So, uh, to do it with JSON, let's uh, get the path to our JSON. Let's copy the path and say path equals the JSON path. Okay, now I will say uh, data equals uh, file.read path. Here we have the data and now I need to pass it. So I will say json.pass data. Again, it didn't work because I need to say require json and now i will pass the data and it worked now let's get for example the first element let's get the title and it works so this way we managed to pass both uh, a json and a yml file just using ruby now let's do the same inside a ruby on rails application so here i have a very basic ruby on rails application with just one page and I will try to import these two files into this application and display the data from them in a view. So I'm going to take these two files and a good place to store this kind of structured data would be, uh, for example, in the database uh, folder. I will create a new folder inside named fixtures. And here I will copy these two files. Okay, and uh, let's try displaying this data from fixtures inside our view. So we will go to our controller and say uh, that we are going to try to load this file. So I will say the first path will be, let's say, to the YML file. I will copy the relative path. Here it is. And I will uh, go back and say uh, at episodes, or let's say YAML equals uh, YAML load. Uh, then I will say file.open and we'll have the path. 
let's uh, start the server. Okay, we have already started the server. Let's see if we can display it in the view. So uh, I'll go to landing page and I will say equals at YAML. And we have the data. Let's get dot first works. Let's get uh, just the title works. Let's try getting all the titles, for example. Uh, to, do the, to do this, we can say yaml.map, then we'll say uh, element, for example, and element title. And here we have all the titles in an array. Okay, so this works. Now, if we're using Rails, uh, not just Ruby, but Rails, there is another syntax uh, sugar that we can write. We can just say uh, yaml.load file and pass in the path. So this is the same syntax, but this is the uh, Rails way and this is the Ruby way. So uh, let's comment out the Ruby way and you see it works just as before. So YAML works, let's do the same with uh, our JSON. So let's uh, get path will be the same but dot JSON and we'll say uh, data equals file dot read path and we will say json.parse data. And this will be the at json list of episodes. Let's see if we can display this list of json episodes. We'll have at json. And you see, so the json data is also visible. Now, what if we want to use uh, this kind of data to create some seed uh, records inside our application? This would actually be a very common use case. So we'll have some kind of incoming list of uh, elements and we want to turn them into database uh, records. So let's create a list of episodes. I will say Rails generate model episode. Oh, actually, this was uh, not a very good thing. I should have said, uh, for example, title and rank uh, number integer. So uh, I will say Rails uh, delete model episode to undo the previous changes and I will create it once again with the title and rank number. Okay, let's have a look at uh, the database migration. So we're going to use just title and rank number for this example. And let's run Rails DB migrate. And now let's try to seed some uh, episodes. So to do it uh, in seeds, we will need to pass one of the files, either the YAML or JSON file. Let's do the YAML one, for example. So here I will say, here is the path. We have the list of episodes. And then we're going to enumerate through the episode. So I will say episodes.each do episode. Uh, title will be episode title rank number will be episode rank uh, number and then i will say episode dot create by title and by rank number and end so let's see if this will work if i run seeds i will say rails db seed okay let's go to the Console episode dot count and you see five episodes have been created. Let's say episode dot all and you see we have uh, passed this YML file. We have uh, used it to create some records in the database. So quite handy. Now surely uh, you can use it for many different things, but uh, I think the two most common approaches are to pass these kind of structured files and create records in the database or when you don't need them in the database, when it is real static data, you can just use it, for example, in your views as we did here. So I guess that's it. Thanks for being with me and see you in the next one.